we're going to review the Kimber 1911 TLE RL2. The Pro refers to the size of the barrel. It's a four inch barrel instead of the normal five inch barrel, full size. TLE is tactical law enforcement. RL refers to the accessory rail and 2 is the series of pistol that it is. How this differs from the series 1 pistols is for a time Kimber went to the external extractors which you see here and also there's a, uh, a firing pin block inside. How that works is the grip safety is depressed and that presses up on a U-shaped block inside the frame about this area and that allows the firing pin to move forward. I'll speak to this a little bit later, the external extractor. They have since gone back to the internal extractor because they experienced a lot of quality issues with this. So again, I'll talk to that a little bit later. The only issue I have with the, uh, the firing pin block is when you're taking it down, you've got to make sure that you're not depressing this uh, grip safety, otherwise it'll pop up uh, on the frame and the slide will bump into that little piece that pops up. And I referred to in one of my other videos, uh, the XD field strip, that when I feel resistance I don't like to muscle the slide back on when, you, when you're placing it back on after a field strip. And that's because I, I don't want to break anything. So, you know, but that comes with knowing your guns too. If you can kind of figure out your guns and you get a feel for them and know what you can and can't do. We'll go over some of the features of the gun. It has front checkering here. I love the front checkering. I have another 1911. Um, it's, it doesn't have that front checkering and I didn't know what I was missing until I got this one. And it has it. Love it. It has the Meprolite night sights on it. They still glow pretty well. Um, still very easily to see in low light or in the dark. Uh, has the accessory rail and this also adds a little bit of weight to the front of the gun and I like the fact that it's got the, the three sections so you can put varying lights on there. The trigger pull on it's really nice. Again we've safety checked the gun. You can see there's a little bit of take up and then the trigger breaks. Alright, the frame size on this is the same frame size as a full size 1911. What differs is the slide length and the barrel length. That's what makes this a 4 inch model, not the frame size. Everything else is going to be equal. You're going to have the same length on your handle, you're going to have the same length here. So uh, if you've got another 1911, you can actually use the magazines in here. They will fit. It has a bushingless barrel and uh, one thing that I'm a little disappointed in is that for how expensive this gun is, how expensive this gun is, it only comes with one magazine. And I just think, okay, Kimber, the customers are paying that much money for a gun, and you only give us one. Come on, uh, I think they ought to give you at least two for the price that you're paying. Field stripping. If you know anything about field stripping 1911s, you're going to know that these are not as easy to field strip as, say, a Glock or an XD or some of the other polymer pistols out there. It just, 1911s are not that way. This differs a little bit in that it comes with a tool. It comes with a tool, and you can see that little hole right there in the guide rod. And this tool will go down inside that hole and then you release the the slide and what that does is it takes the tension off of the spring inside you can see that that's now loose um, I'm not going to go over the whole stripping of it but. so If you get a 1911, understand that field stripping them is not going to be as simple and as easy as a Glock. Uh, you'll hear a lot of people say that 1911s aren't for beginners. I tend to agree. Uh, the second gun I bought was a 1911, however, and it did take a learning curve to learn how to deal with it, field strip it, and those sort of things. But uh, I really do like the platform. 
Uh, I, I really like 1911s as, as much as I like the polymer type guns. I think each each platform has you know different attributes and assets that it gives to the user. I've put about probably 700 to a thousand rounds through this gun. Um, what I've used is mainly kind of the cheaper stuff, you know, Winchester white box that kind of thing. But uh, this is the original magazine that it came with. This is the Wilson Combat 8 magazine. This only holds seven, and this belongs to my uh, my other Kimber, which is an older. It's actually a, a Series One Kimber, and it functions just fine with this magazine as well. So three different magazines, and I've had no problems with it whatsoever with these three magazines. Now let's get to the external extractor here. I've heard horror stories about these external extractors failing. I haven't had a problem. Not in the 700 to 1000 rounds that I've fired through this, not once have I had any failure to feed, failure to eject, anything. This gun has been flawless. I've had no problems with it whatsoever. What this will do, however, is you can see there's, there's space in there. I'll roll in some of this other footage that you can see and it certainly does collect dirt and grime in there but again 700 to 1000 rounds I never cleaned it until yesterday so I've never had a problem with it at all the the differences in the internal and external extractor is the internal extractor is just as it says internal and it's one piece so it's going to run from here all the way to the back in one piece the external I believe is three pieces three or four I can't remember I think it's three but you've got here here and a spring inside and maybe even this piece right in there that you can't see but uh, or can barely see so it's a little more prone to breaking and uh, Again, what I've heard of some of the dirt getting inside there and it not extracting. But this gun, again, seven to a thousand rounds, that's just a guess. I lose track. I, I don't know how many rounds I've put through, but a lot. I've never had a problem with this gun at all. It's been really nice. All right. I don't feel that I would be honest in my review if I didn't give a little update. A buddy and, and I went out shooting just shortly after I completed the review on the TLE RL2 and my previous statement of putting about 700 to 1000 rounds through the gun without any failures was correct at the time however out shooting I did experience a, uh, a stovepipe so I would have to update that previous statement to say that between 800 and 1100 rounds I've only experienced one issue and and I happened to catch it on film so that's what you're seeing now and uh, I had four bullets in the magazine and the second to last bullet stove piped and as I cleared it it ejected the stove piped casing and it also ejected the next round and as such the slide locked back you know you can kind of see that here on the video so that's just a quick update um, do I still trust the gun yes absolutely I think one issue in 800 to 1100 rounds to me is extremely insignificant and uh, I'd still trust the gun for uh, concealed carry use